This episode of Congratulations is brought to you by the Cash App. What's up, you guys? How's it going? It's uh, Chris D'Elia here live at the Congratulations studio. Um, and we've got some dates we've got to plug here. Uh, we've got October 12th, Santa Barbara coming up, and Riverside, California, and San Diego, California, October 18th and October 19th. We've got about three or four shows there. Uh, San Diego can't get enough of the Delia. <laughs> we got Foxwoods, Connecticut, uh, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, for some reason, two shows. Rochester, New York, Royal Oak, Michigan, Detroit, Michigan. We've got two shows over there, and... Uh, New Buffalo, Michigan, a lot of places in Michigan for some reason. Minneapolis, Minnesota, November 9th, two shows filming a special for Netflix, Crystalia. And then we have some shows in Tampa, Florida in November and uh, Melbourne, Florida for some reason, Hollywood, Florida, even though there's a Hollywood, California, they decided to name it Hollywood, California as well. El Paso, Texas for some reason. <laughs> Houston and then Chicago, Illinois just added another date. Uh, New Year's Eve, overwhelming demand. That's 13,000 tickets. Delia sold in Chicago. Should have played an arena. Didn't know it was going to be that bonkers when he went on sale. But it's all good. Get your tickets now, chrysalid.com. www.chrysalid.com. Um, but anyway, dude. Yeah, dude, I'm back. I'm back back and it's fucking ripping i'm back from atlantic city and uh so it's quick um i'm back from atlantic city i shot some of army of the dead in atlantic city i couldn't wait to get out of albuquerque and get to atlantic city couldn't believe i was saying i can't wait to get to atlantic city got to atlantic city Atlantic City, and was super depressed because Atlantic City is super depressed. All good. Uh, stayed at a hotel that lost their gaming license. So there's no casino in the hotel that we were staying in. Eh. So I'm done with that. I'm done with Army of the Dead. I got one more sh- sh- day I have to do in Albuquerque, so it's all good. Going to dry my nose out real good and plenty when I get there. Going to get there, and then my fucking lips just go like this and break, and bleed, and all good. Uh, And when you go to the bathroom, literally, it's very painful. So it's all good. So um, uh, uh, I got back from uh, Atlantic City. Atlantic City's crazy, man. I'm doing a zombie movie, okay? So I'm dealing with like a bunch of zombies when I'm I'm on on set, just going... (laughs) For some reason, that's the zombie noise for all of the zombie shows. And uh, for Walking Dead, you know... I, I shit you not, dude. I I walk outside on the boardwalk in Atlantic City and I see this homeless guy and for real he's going like this. And I was like, oh, zombies in real life. Um, but yeah, dude, it's crazy uh, about the about Atlantic City and how it's a thing. Rooms are like fifty dollars a night. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, and uh, but it was cool to to be in Atlantic City for an extended period of time. I guess I mean I was in. I've only played like the Borgata and Harris, and I go the day of and I leave the next day because why would I stay in Atlantic City? But dude, when you're in the Borgata, and when you're in the um, like there's an o- the hotel called Ocean. There's a few hotels when you go in, you might as well be in Vegas, dude. Except for the people look like trees. They're just not as good looking as the people in Vegas. Now, Vegas has the troglodytes. Now, make no mistake. If there's slot machines around, there's troglodytes around. Now, if you were my opener, you'd say, what's a troglodyte? Well, a troglodyte is somebody's a troll. It's basically a troll that lives under a fucking bridge or something like that. Anyway, it's a dumb cocksucker word. You know what I mean? Troglodyte, like just make it shorter. Call it a trog or a troll. But they don't. The English language likes to get fucking jiggy with it. So they're going to get jiggy with it, dude. Um, I'm wearing my future so bright, way too bright shirt because mm, future so way too bright. 
Got me with the fucking shades on over here. And you can see the back if you were behind me, but you can't right now. It's all good. Um, not going to show it to you because I'm fucking don't want to. And that's respect, dude. That's fucking straight up respect. Me not doing what I want to, me doing exactly what I want to do for you guys. You're welcome. <laughs> anyway, dude, I am back. And I was in every uh, Friday, I went, I went to New York City. Because it was uh, because I didn't want to be in uh, Atlantic City for like two days off because I would have fucking, you know. It's crazy weird to be like on a cas- in a casino, but also near the beach. It's a Jersey. And uh, seagulls. Even the seagulls are like, what the fuck is going on around here? Why are there casinos? Squawk? And so... Uh, like you see them, if you look close to their face, they're like, Squawk? Why are there troglodytes? Squawk? Um, squawk? This was ours a little while ago. Squawk? Dude, squawk. Um, <laughs> so I went to New York City. Man, every time you go to New York, you see the most New York shit. It's unreal. It's just unreal. I was in New York, and I saw two dudes fucking straight up fighting with each other, arguing, like not physically fighting, but they were, uh, like, it was like the next step was the guy, one of the guys has to, like, duck because the other guy's going to punch. And they were arguing each with to each other about, arguing with each other about uh, whose team was better. Uh, it's New Jersey. It's New York. They were talking about the Giants and the Jets. He's like, you're fucking, he's like, fuck your team. You ain't shit. Your team ain't fucking shit. But like for real angry. Um, And they were like, you fucking piece of shit. You ain't shit. He was like, you ain't shit. Your team ain't shit. And you ain't shit. He was like, he was like, and the other guy was like, motherfucker, I'm gangster. And he was like, you ain't gangster. You ain't shit without your boys. Like that's what was going on. And they kept on like walking away, but then walking close to each other. Now this was the most New York shit. Not yet. But this was the most New York shit. They were doing that to each other. And I shit you not, dude. They were actually for real angry with each other. But they were also fucking dapping each other and high-fiving each other. Uh, Your friends are not. I am not bullshitting you, dude. They were like, you motherfucker, you ain't shit without your boys. You ain't gangster. Motherfucker, I am gangster, motherfucker. I'll kill you, motherfucker. And they were like, hell, motherfucker, fuck your bitch ass, motherfucker. But I respect that, but fuck you. They literally said they respect that. But we're doing that. And they were yelling at the top of their lungs. lungs. Everybody was watching. And they were going to fucking shoot each other. But they were dapping. Why were they doing it? Don't know. But that's the New York way. In a New York minute. Ooh, everything can change in the New York minute. Uh, my mom, when I was younger, would do fucking, would say New York minute, and, and but she would do it not the singing way. She would be like, hey, in a New York minute, in a New York minute. And it would always make me mad because a New York minute is 60 seconds, and that's how much a regular minute is. But she thought she was crafty and cool and poetic. Now, that's what she does, and it's all good, my babies. Moms are dramatic. If your mom ain't dramatic, guess what? She's your dad. Because moms are dramatic. As women get older, and especially if they pop kids out, when they become a mom, they get dramatic. When my mom saw Columbine, she dropped... When she saw Columbine on the, on the news, she dropped her notebook. Who the fuck drops stuff in real life? For real. Who, who for real goes, uh, and then drops something? Who are you, Kaiser Soze at the end? She dropped her notebook on my foot. I go, ow, mom, what the fuck? And she says, oh, shut the fuck up. Ha, 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 ha. Dude, she said, shut the fuck up, you know? My mom. Oh, shut the fuck up. Chris. My, my, my Chris. Um, so, yeah. So, in a fucking New York minute, she dropped the notebook on my fucking foot. And it's all good. Now, can I get the cowlick down on the back of my head? No. And it's all good. Does it piss me off? Yeah. Is it going to change it? No. It doesn't matter. Do I need to look good? No, it doesn't matter. But, um, so, anyway... I did. The, I, I. I. She. She dropped the notebook, and that was when I real. That was when I came up with the thing where I was like, "Wow, dude, moms are dramatic, but dads aren't." You know, dads aren't. 
that's just fucking laugh it off and I don't know, man. They get maybe my 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 dad's sentimental as fuck too, though. My dad will like at the like if it's just and that, but that's probably why I'm sentimental, man. Like when I see shit like involving like a a kid and a and a and a dad. If it's a, I don't give a shit. If it's a, it could be a fucking Travago commercial. I'm crying immediately. If he was like, I go to Travago to get all my hotel deals because I because when I'm staying with my son, we need, and I'm just fuck it. That guy from Travago, the commercial. That guy's it's, uh, handsome, you know. For sure, he's got no kids because he just stays fucking. The Travago guy's the shit. When I when I, I want to when I get older, I want to be the Travago guy. No, I don't want to actually work for Travago, but I want to fucking be that. Like, that guy's so, so handsome. It's hilarious. If you have all even gray hair, you're the shit. Unless it's white, then you don't look good. And that's the rules. And I don't make the fucking rules, dude. The rules are the rules, and I figure them out. <laughs> um. Anyway. Um. But that's, yeah. So I saw that New York thing, and it was fucking insane. And I was in Atlantic City, and uh, I, I, when I was in Atlantic City, I was with my buddy Garrett Dillahunt, and dude, we were like, "Let's go out for the day." Fuck it, we got we got wrapped. We wrapped the day or the day. It was like ten a.m. Woke up at fucking oh dark thirty, and we wrapped at ten a.m. And then we went to the fucking factory stores. Dude, have you ever been to a factory store? A factory outlet, bro. They had Adidas, Reebok, Nike. Garrett likes a fucking pro bass fishing shop, whatever the, whatever. So we went there. Of course he does, dude. My buddy Garrett gets those fucking hats that wrap all the way around. The brim is all the way around and it's not a cowboy hat. If you have a hat, by the way, cowboy hats, get out of here. If you're a real cowboy, fine. But if you're just like some chick that's filling herself on Instagram, take it off. And if you're a dude, like this guy, my buddy, he get, I mean, dude, how, how annoying is it having the fucking thing over your face? What are you, a fucking member of the Wu-Tang Clan? Fisherman, and um, <laughs> yo yo, what up, is Fisherman? So he's got, so he's got the. If you have a brim, the brim stops here, dude. It stops here. You know, you have a little plank. That's it. You have a fucking plank. It's a ball cap. If you have the brim that goes all the way around, you better fucking put some chips on it and some guacamole on the top, and take it off and start dipping, dude. Now, that's a fucking grand slam, and I didn't even mean to, but those shits just come out. I would love to see a guy in a hat like that for real, like a fly fish. What, are, what the fuck kind of hats are those anyway? Bucket hats or whatever? Not a bucket hat, but I mean, a bucket hat too. I would love, one day when I'm fucking 70, I want to get to the point where I just do shit like this, where I see a guy wearing that hat, and I walk in, I get a bag of chips, and I get some guacamole, and I start putting the guacamole on the top of his fucking head. And he says, yo, what the fuck are you doing? And I said, oh, oh dude, I'm sorry. Oh, my God, my bad. I, I'm sorry. You're wearing one of those hats. And he says, well, why the fuck are you putting guacamole on it? And I say, well, because the only, <laughs> the only reason some a shape like that would exist would be if you put dip in the middle of it and chips around the brim. <laughs> And then I'm ready to fight. And if I lose, I lose. But you fight for a reason. Dude, I'm Jon Snow in this motherfucker. If I see a brim that wraps all the way around and I'm 70, I'm getting chips and guacamole, and I'm Jon Snow because I'm fighting for a reason, dude. These are the real shits. And the guy beats... I don't care if he's big. I got to get to the point where I don't give a fuck. Where I truly don't give a fuck. Um, Anyway... We went to the factory stores, and uh, we were like, whoa, dude, it's got Reebok, it's got Nike, it's got fucking Adidas. Remember when you were in high school and the kid would call it Adidas because he thought he was fucking German, you know? And he was like, that's how they say it. And you're like, dude, shut the fuck up. That's not how they say it. Adidas, dude. No, it's Adidas. You know, you know that, right? And you know, it's an acronym for all day I dream about sex. Did you know that? That's why they did that? No. No, that's not true. Um, so, uh, the outlet factory stores, dude, we went into the outlet factory stores and we went into all of them and dude, I wanted to ask the clerk, how did you do it? And when they say, what do you mean? And I say, well, you successfully created a time machine. And when they say, why are you saying it? I say, because all of these clothes can't exist now. 
They have to exist in 2004. Here's the other thing. Why did you only go back to 2004? If Since you've created... I should have walked in and I should, should have said, how's Napoleon? And they say, what? And I say, well, certainly you went back... <laughs> You went back to other ages, right? And they say, what do you mean? Well, you see, the thing is, everything in here you just stole from 2004. Everything was fucking neon green and gray. Dude, if you're wearing neon green and gray, you're in 2004. And you love Smash Mouth. Oh man, it was unbelievable. Every story, we, dude, it, 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 it literally so depressing. Just a a box. That's what the store was. A box. No character to the fucking store at all. Fine, and then just stuff thrown on the on the on the things. Pink shoes, like pink and blue shoes, that like nobody would buy. I can't believe factory stores. There was gas. There was like Polo Ralph Lauren. Um, it was unbelievable. I was stark raving mad. Every time I walk in, I go, oh, come on. Don't have a fucking factory store, dude. I don't know. People weren't even getting stuff. I would say like maybe it's for a certain type of person, but nobody was in there. Only me. Oh, come on. I'm stark raving mad about this. So, um, anyway, dude, it was unbelievable. Now, is there a place called the Sugar Factory that's in the Hard Rock Hotel? Yes. Did I go? Yes. Did I get ice cream? Yes. Was it good? Yes. Then did I get ice cream at another place? Because I would try and test out all the different ice creams in Atlantic City? Yes. Was it as good? No. Was it closer? Yes. So did I go again? Yes. Should I have gone to the sugar factory because I had better ice cream? Yes. Did I not? No, because of laziness? Yes. (laughs) There's nothing more fucking piggy than going and getting the worst ice cream because it's closer. Go. Take a few extra steps, you fucking nimrod. But I wouldn't. Um, so I went to go get the fucking, I went to the sugar factory and that ice cream was banging, dude. If you go to the hard rock in Atlantic city, that's just banging. But if you go to the fucking, uh, if you go to the hard, if you go to the, if, oh, I got the, don't get food there though. I got food there and it's, it's so gross. It's, it's so gross. I mean, don't get, I got the salmon. Don't get the salmon at a place called the sugar factory. Literally someone was like, Oh shit, what you, some guy came up to me and said, Oh shit, what you doing here? I was like, What do you mean? He was like, And you an actor or some shit? I was like, Well, yeah, I guess, sure, yeah, yeah. And he was like, What y'all doing here? I was like, Oh, we're doing a movie. And he was like, Oh shit. And I already ordered the the ice cream. And the the lady behind the counter goes like this, here you go, and gives me the ice cream. And I said, Cool, what do I owe you? And she says, You're shooting a movie here? And I said, Yeah, and she said, Just take it. Ah. <laughs> ah. Uh, uh. Don't even deserve the perks. You don't know me. Took a fucking regular dude's word for it. Just some guy with his chick. What are you doing here? You shooting a movie? Yeah. Just take it. Ah, sad in a way. You know? Wow, dude. Um, Atlantic City is fucking hilarious. Just straight up zero good looking people. <laughs> um I don't know. So Jersey though. Like crazy incredibly Jersey. Went to uh went to oh let me do these ads and then I'll do it. Um there we go. Then I'll talk more about how Jersey Atlantic City is. Blue apron. Dude, I eat blue apron so much, I'm gonna turn into a blue apron. Okay? I love it. They make really great uh, uh, food, and you cook it yourself, and it's an experience, and it's beautiful, and you eat it with your loved ones, and you go, yum. A great dinner is more than farm-fresh ingredients, but that's a great place to start. 
With Blue Apron's seasonally inspired and chef-curated recipes, you're not just making dinner, you're making memories. Blue Apron offers three flexible plans. The two-person plan, four-person family plan, and the WW freestyle plan. Wow. Choose from a variety of chef-designed recipes and get perfectly portioned ingredients delivered right to your door. Blue Apron helps me discover my inner chef and learn new recipes and techniques. Now, I didn't even know I, was, I had an inner chef. But Blue Apron, you helped me have a hobby. Thanks. Uh, up to, upcoming meals include chicken chili enchiladas. Oh, man, I'm so hungry now. Y-style glazed tilapia. Mm. Thai. Oh, wow. It, what a typo. On fire. Why? Style glazed. Thai style glazed tilapia. Orange and sweet chili chicken. Dude, anything with chili, I'm all in. Sicilian cauliflower stromboli. It's Italian. Um, to start making delicious, bragworthy meals at home without the hassle, try Blue Apron. Check out this week's menu and get $60 off when you visit blueapron.com slash congrats. That's blueapron.com slash congrats. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. My bookie. Look, I don't know about you guys, but for me, a game is 10 times more exciting when I'm putting money on it. Sometimes I have a gut feeling about a matchup, and sometimes I'm just being on my team because they're my team. I'm betting on my team because they're my team. Uh, regardless whether you've been betting for years or you're ready to play for the first time, my bookie is your best bet this season. If you're the kind of guy who likes to bet a little to win a lot, try a parlay. For instance, if you like a couple of the big favorites this week, parlays are perfect because they let you bet multiple games together for a much bigger payout. So if you're going to bet this season, do the smart thing and go to mybookie.ag because no one gives you more ways to win. Between football season, the MLB playoffs, that's baseball, and the start of the NBA and NHL seasons, that's basketball and hockey, If it's time to get off the sideline and get into the action. Uh, if you really want to support your team this season, don't just sit on the sidelines. Get in the game with mybookie.ag. And if you join right now, mybookie will double your first deposit. Use promo code CONGRATS to activate the offer. That's promo code CONGRATS. Visit mybookie.ag today. You play, you win, you get paid. I went to uh, New Jersey, or I went to Atlantic City, and it's so, it's S to Jersey. We went to a place called White House Subs. By the way, I went to White House Subs, and there's a few White House Subs, and it was just, silly like i mentioned it around a local which was annoying because i was talking to garrett my buddy dylan hunt and he i was like we gotta go to this place called white house subs apparently it's really good my agent told me about it and the guy who overheard us was like yeah but you got to go to the original now we know if you know anything about me my anger is arising because it doesn't matter about the original dude it doesn't matter i said oh why is it better food there and he said nah but the atmosphere and i go and then Garrett, of course, because he's a real person, is like, well, you know, let's go to the original. It's like, All right, we'll go to the original. So we drove. He drove. And the whole time he was like, I got to get gas. And I was like, you're fine. It was like one-fourth. And he was like, yeah, we got to find a gas. I was like, you're fine, dude. We got there. As soon as we walked in, it was, Garrett says, man, there's a lot of Jersey faces in here, huh? And there was. Everybody was talking about Frank. Do you know what I mean? Ah, that's not what ah, that's not what Frank said. That, I heard that fourteen times while I was eating a fucking sub. Ah, that's not what Frank said. Ah, that's not what Carmine said. Heard it fourteen times, and and um, I get there and the lady's like, "You know what you want?" And I was like, "Nah, you got menus." And she was like, "Sure." She put down menus and then there's a half order and a full order. At, at White House Subs. And I was like, I'm going to get the turkey. You know how I do it. I fucking get the turkey and the cheese. If I'm at a sub place, I'll get a turkey and a cheese shit. It's because I want to rock it. I don't get the fucking, you know, other shit. I don't mix meats too much. An Italian sub is nice. Let's not fuck around. An Italian sub is nice as fuck. But the turkey and cheese? I mean, I would roll down a fucking, uh, what do you call it? Ralph's, when I used to have a fucking, uh, when I used to live in my apartment, I'd roll down to Ralph's. I'd walk down there and just go get meat and cheese, dude. And they'd be like, hey, how's it going? Regular? And I'd say, fuck yeah, meat and cheese. And I'd roll back and I'd surprise my ex-girlfriend. And I'd be like, I got meat and cheese because that's how we said it. Meat and cheese because we thought we were cute. When we broke up, we both, we both cried. 
But meat and cheese lives on, dude. So now I get meat and cheese. <laughs> anyway, I mean, in the About Us section for White House subs, there's a fucking photo of the two guys who found it, and the one of the guys is uh, chomping on a stogie. Eh, hey, uh, sir, Jersey. Hey, you want to take it? Eh. The White House sub shop was opened in October 1946 by Anthony Basile, along with his Aunt Basilia and Uncle Fritz Sacco. Eh, sir, Jersey. Fritz. You know? Fucking Fritz, dude. Uncle Fritz Sacco. S-A-C-C-O. Fritz isn't a name. Fritz is like something that you're on if you're going through a breakup. Dude, Fritz is a noise that a fucking cable, like a broken cable would make. Fritz, 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 Fritz. And that's your name, dude? It's a jersey. So, um... In 1946, our parents were committed to bringing you the best sandwich made with the choicest meat. With the choicest, 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 Jesus Christ, choicest meat. Anytime you say meats, that's so Jersey and Italian. Hey, what meats you want? Today, we, their children, are committed to maintaining that same tradition of excellence created by our parents. Sincerely, the Basile and Sacco Connolly families and the White House gang. Basile along with Aunt Basilia. Ah, so confusing. Basile and Basilia. Most Italian lawyers of all time. Come on down to Basile and Basilia. Um, so we went there and I heard fucking... That's not what Frank said so much. So there's the large portion and the half portion. portion. And I said, yeah, let me get the turkey and the cheese. She's like, you want the peppers? And I was like, it's Jersey? Okay. And she was like... Uh, do you uh, do you want the full or the uh, the half? And I said full. And she she looked at me and she was like, full is really big. And I said how big? And she said full is like that big. She goes like this. She goes like this. Okay. I mean, and and then half is that big. And I was like, oh, she's just doing it too much because she thinks she thinks your boy can't unhinge his jaw. You know what I mean? Baby, I'm a boa constrictor. You put a fucking sub in front of me. You put anything. I don't. Stop. I stop eating when there's no more. What's this shit when people are like, ah, that's enough for me. Boom. That's a p- portions, dude? Uh-uh. How much did you make? So I said, get me the large. She said, all right. So they brought the large? Dude. What is that? Oh. Nah. water um so so they brought the large and uh is that gonna be annoying on the thing okay so they brought the large and it was you know like if you go to a subway it's like a subway if you get the large it's two halves dude it was four uh four and um and it was unbelievable and I was like, oh, no. And I fucking didn't stop eating. I ate the whole thing. It's gross. So gross. And I ate the whole thing. And Garrett didn't because he's a real person. Hold on. Um, is that water? What is that? Is that the air here? Yeah. Oh, it is? Okay. Uh, you can go turn it off if you want. It's fine? All right, fuck it. This is real life, dude. You get it, and this is real life. Um, Oh, man, did you guys see the fucking thing? Did you guys see the fucking thing about uh, the girl falling, the mom falling on the scooter? Oh, my God, dude. We've got to watch this. I put it on Twitter. 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 Congratulations. I'm on Twitter. Oh, man, I don't know my thing. I never know my passwords. It's all good. The freaks come out at night. Down. The freaks come out at night. Okay, I don't have it. What are you laughing at? Me? What'd I do? 
I can never find my fucking password. And I get so fucking mad. I can't find my password. Dude, when this chick falls, there's no sound. So I'll just fucking put it on the video podcast. Dude, this mom, who looks like my fucking friends that were twins moms when we were fucking in high school, tries to do the bird scooter. And dude, it's like, here's the deal, man. If you have kids and they're teenagers, don't get on a bird scooter. She fucking crunches her body so hard. She falls so much wobbling, you know? And like, the dude, it's so funny when people fall because they're like, oh, I, I got it, you know? They're like, nah, but I'm me though. That's what people think when they're falling. But I'm not, you know what I mean? Like, they're like, yeah, but I'm me. I'll figure it out. I'm not one of these fucking, and then before you know it, boom, boom dude. Her whole skeleton crunches in a busy intersection. Practice on the fucking sidewalk, by the way. Don't practice next to a, re- a an actual Harley. Also, she's shaped like a pear. Be athletic if you're... Oh! Uh... Dude, she hurt herself so bad. I feel bad. Anyway... The, des- the reason I bring it up is because the deserve it scale is just off the charts with that one, dude. The deserve it scale is off the fucking charts with that. I mean, she falls hard as fuck. Um, should I do these other ads yet or no? Yeah. Ah, so it doesn't give a fuck. Yeah, you know, Juan Faro goes, sure. <laughs> Zapier. You guys know about Zapier? Look, growing a business is hard, especially when you're wasting hours every day moving data from emails to spreadsheets to your CRM to wherever. Shouldn't that kind of stuff just happen without you lifting a finger? Zapier can help. Now, of course, I don't lift a finger because why should I when I have one fire? He does all that stuff for me. But I know for a fact that he uses it for automating his workflow and keeping track of all of my money and all of my bags. Zapier is the easiest way to automate your work. It connects all your business software and handles work for you. So you can focus on the things that matter most. No more wasting your time on tasks that you know could be automated because that's exactly what Zapier was built to do. Just go to our special link, zapier.com slash congrats. Connect the apps you use most and let Zapier take it from there. And that uh, Zapier supports more than 1,500 businesses application, uh, business applications, so the possibilities are virtually endless. Uh, more than 4.5 million people who are uh, – there are – there are more than 4.5 million people who are saving an average of 40 hours per month by using Zapier. So come on, get on the get on the Zapier train right now through November. Try Zapier free by going to our special link, zapier.com slash congrats. That's Z-A-P-I-E-R dot com slash congrats for your first or for your free 14 day trial. Zapier.com slash congrats. Butcher box. You like going yum? Well, not everyone has convenient access to high-quality meat, high-quality meats. It can be hard to find 100% grass-fed finished beef, free-range organic chicken, heritage breed pork, or wild-caught salmon at the grocery store. Duh. And when you do find it, it's expensive. Oh, what the heck? What the heck? Luckily, there's Butcher Box. Butcher Box believes everyone deserves high quality, humanely sourced meats. <laughs> Every month, Butcher Box ships a curated selection of high quality meat right to my home, dude. And I love it. All meat is free of antibiotics and added hormones. So you know it's healthy. Each box has 9 to 11 pounds of meat, enough for 24 individual meals. I'm um, hello. Packed fresh and shipped, frozen and vacuum sealed, so it stays that way. Butcher box, it's a no-brainer. It's the best meat shipped right to my door, which means one less trip to the grocers. It's the way meat should be, 100% grass-fed and finished beef. All that stuff I said earlier. Butcher box is the most affordable and convenient way to get healthy, humanely raised meat. Right now, Butcher box is offering new members ground beef for life. That's two pounds of ground beef in every box for the life of their subscription, plus $20 off their first box. Just go to butcherbox.com slash 
congrats or enter promo code congrats at checkout. That's butcherbox.com slash congrats or enter promo code congrats at checkout. Congratulations is brought to you by Cash App, the official app of the log cabin. I've been list dude, I've been listening to podcasts because I just download them. I listen to the fucking business wars, WCW versus the WWF shit. Vince McMahon was a, a lunatic. Dude, he became a heel in the WWF. He became a character. It's kind of genius. Like he was using these fighters and they would go back and forth from the WCW to the WWF. The WWF, he owned, Vince McMahon owned the WWF. And they would go back to the WCW with Ted Turner uh, owned it for, and he put it on TBS. And it was like a real struggle for both of them to beat each other out. And they kept the, – the actors, the, the wrestlers kept flip-flopping, going to the WCW, who would pay better. You know, the contract would be up. And Vince McMahon finally got like a rap as a bad guy and he was like, fuck it. I'll just be a wrestler. Dude, and he would go out in the ring and, like, argue with the wrestlers and became a character in it. And that's how they beat out the WCW. And then he hired the guy from the WCW. Dude, it's so fucking... I ain't got okay. no motherfucker. That's why I fuck your bitch. It's unbelievable, dude. You got to listen to The Business Wars. And then this other podcast I listened to, which was absolutely fucking insane. You know Keith Morrison? From fucking Dateline, dude. It, the 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 fucking thing is called. There's something about Pam. Oh, I'm sorry. The thing about Pam. And I I swear I just listened to it because of the guy's voice. The first three episodes were banging. I was like, wait a second. And then I realized it was maybe just the guy's voice. Because Keith Morrison, dude, the way he does it, first of all, how's his face his face? It's so long. It looks like Clint Eastwood is looking in a funhouse mirror. I mean, his fucking face is a large lima bean. Keith Lima Bean Morrison. It's so funny. Dude, I was listening to this. First of all, the first episode I was listening to in Atlantic City as I was going to bed, I got so creeped out that I had to stop listening to it because I got scared. Am I a pussy? Yes. Is it all good? Yes. And Keith Morrison, dude, just he's this guy. Another suspect, one close to the case. Obviously, you know. The thing about Pam is oh. brought to you by Dateline NBC. From Dateline NBC, Kathy Singer and Christine Fillmore. All right, but the thing about Pam, <laughs> you know, love. By the way, fucked Pam. That's how he's saying it. I know more about Pam. I know more about Pam than any of you know about Pam. I mean, sings it. Here, hold on. Just listen. God, this, I don't know who's better, the guy from Forensic File or is this guy for real? About 5 p.m. Then he ran errands for the next hour, filled up his tank, picked up cigarettes, dog food, couple of iced teas. He got to Mike's house for game night about 6 p.m. Let me just show you that. I'll show you the <laughs> part. Stopped at Arby's and drove 30 or so more minutes to get home, clocking his arrival at 9.40, 9.45. Okay, it's all good. According to official records, yeah, Russ made that good. He said records, call but all good. At approximately nine forty. Okay, that he's night. just going through the. Oh, got a little bit dark with it. Nine thirty that night. No. Dory checked out. Oh. But you could tell that something wasn't sitting right. Us detectives. So into it. Russ made that nine one one call at approximately right. nine forty. But you could night. tell. But so, his it's... story checked out. Oh. But you could tell that something wasn't sitting right with detectives. So good. But you could tell but you could tell something wasn't sitting right with detectives. Dude. I gotta find a good uniforms, CSI, detectives. I mean, there was one part where I took a screenshot of it, let me go get it, because it was so funny the way he said he says Pam. <laughs> Oh, here it is. Pam. It's episode three. At five. This is the shit I do. What an idiot, you know? 
I was like, oh, I've got to fucking. The Damn. way he says. Uh, uh, uh. The way he says, Pam. I firmly believe if a jury hears all of the evidence. This guy, you can hear, he, he gets so mad he punches the air. Russ. And by all the evidence, he meant really everything to do with Pam. Oh, uh. <laughs> and by all the evidence, he meant everything to do with Pam. Wow, I love we're going to dig into all that all that jury in this country that can convict for us. I, I gotta play that again. And by all the evidence, he meant really everything to do with Pam. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking three letters. <laughs> the guy goes, Pam. Oh, the balls on Keith Morrison. See, that's the thing, dude. God, he's good. And of course, there were things about Pam that we didn't know about. But when we figured it out, we learned that there was more than meets the eye. With all these inconsistencies, Joel decided to look for other possible holes in the prosecution's case. Like that polygraph test. God, I want to hang with this guy. I mean, imagine just chilling with the dude. Just like going to fucking get some food. Careful, there's a yellow light. Um, it might turn red before you cross the line. You'd just be like, that's so fucking interesting. <laughs> Ow. The airbag bursted out. <laughs> you might want to watch out. There's a sharp part. There's a sharp metal slab coming out where it used to be the door. <laughs> oh, he caught himself. <laughs> My favorite is when he gets real, like, chilled and, like, um, um, comf comfy with it. Now, of course, that's what Pam would have said. Pam. Oh, fuck. I love that guy's voice. I don't know if it's him or the other Forensic File guys that's this shit. How's the Forensic guy, Files guy go again? Uh, there was... Oh, yeah, yeah. That's how it is. Um, wait, let me just play a little of it. It makes me laugh so hard. There was, of course... What, what's the guy's good name is The Voice, right? Forensic Files. Vo the vo the voice. Voice guy. I mean, you know. Oh, the behind the scenes, really? Forensic Files has always differed from other true crime TV shows. Tick Files has a film noir vibe. Once an episode is edited, it's sent to the Los Angeles-based Music Collective. It's a very different thing as soon as you... All right, bro. <laughs> The music really drives the emotion. Uh, I mean, yeah, all right, we know. Here's the guy, here's the voice. Hello again. Is so time, about that time, my time in the Army, and then I got there into is. Radio on 55. But here you are on the CBS Morning Show in New York, mm -hmm. and it was, you were doing the... Play it. And that was the... Let him talk. And you'd see here. the engineer there just is. before we start put that diamond cutter on the disc, oh, and yeah. they would give you the cue... And uh, I remember the orchestra would go, uh, first of all, tick tock, tick tock, that's the Hamilton March Company, yes, and then yes. the uh, music, and I would come on and say, the passage of time is beyond our control, but it passes beautifully when a Hamilton marks the hour. Wow. Then they would, the girl would sing, was it a dream, was it a dream? The passage of time. Oh, this is a tribute. Every, and if, you ain't shit if you don't have a t tribute. On, on Peter Thomas was born in Pensacola, Florida on June 28th, 1924. I mean, imagine, just like, you know, if you, if you don't have a tribute on YouTube, you ain't shit. There's a tribute for everyone. I swear to God, there's a fucking tribute for my maid that comes. It'll be like fucking... 24. 
the son of a Welsh minister and I an English teacher. I love how the guy teacher. who does this voice. He learned from them how to communicate. He was probably so nervous because he was doing the tribute to the fucking guy who is the shit, Peter Thomas. His voice is good too. Project and enunciate. Uh, Every night growing up, Peter read stories aloud to his family. That's bullshit. Which perfected his technique. That didn't happen, dude. You his father's tell. philosophy? Words must be visualized, understood, and felt before spoken. Oh, imagine thinking that. Imagine thinking that. What a cock you'd be. Suctional calling. There were trace amounts of succinal calling. Words must be visualized, understood and felt, before spoken. Pam. Words must be visualized, understood and felt, before spoken. Um, but yeah, it's so crazy, though. The lady... I fucking want to talk about that way too long. But there was a lady um, that was... Um, there was a lady that, uh, this guy got uh, wrongly accused of killing his wife. Imagine fucking you, your wife gets killed and then you get thrown in jail and you didn't do it. Are, are you kidding me, dude? There would, nothing would be worse than that. Like, well, of course nothing would be worse than that. But like, to add insult to injury... I don't understand how these people, like, stay on in the courtroom and they're just, like, silent, dude. I'd be like, hey, you fucking asshole. I didn't do it. Why is he asking that question? And they'd be like, contempt, contempt, hostile witness, hostile uh, def whatever the fuck I am, person on trial. I'd be like, dude, I didn't fucking do it, asshole. I didn't do it. And they'd be like, well, this is what, see, this is his, his shit. Go, he goes crazy. See, this is, I'm like, no, you don't understand, man. There's a fucking real killer out there that's getting away with it. I didn't do it. I loved her. Fucking case is open, dude. Go find it. I'd be in jail so quick. Let me tell you right now. My wife died. I'd be in jail so quick because I would, I would show so much anger. I'd be like, you're not fucking doing it right, dude. The cops would show up and they'd be like, okay, and so where were you? I was right here, dude. All right, I wasn't here obviously when she got killed, and then uh, now I'm here. So what's up, dude? And they'd be like, "Whoa, whoa, Mister Delia, whoa! Did you guys ever fight?" And I'd be like, "A fucking course we did. We're fucking married to each other." And they'd be like, "Dude, okay, we're gonna have to take you in." And I'd be like, "Me? I didn't fucking do it. Get the real bad guy out there, coppers." I'd be in jail immediately. And they make a podcast about me called The Thing About Chris. The thing about Chris is he got so mad when the police officers showed up because he thought the cops weren't doing their job. Well, naturally, Chris got a little frustrated. And he swung at the cop, and the cop, who was <laughs> very well trained, ducked and then put Chris's arm behind his back and put the handcuffs. And then Chris went to jail for the rest of his life. Screamed every day. Oh, that's the thing, dude. You could kill my wife, and I, I would get blamed for it. No doubt. There's no fucking doubt I wouldn't get blamed for it. And I'll never do that. I would never kill my wife. I would never kill my wife. Anyway, I haven't done a podcast in fucking about a month because I have, I've had to fucking try to do this shit, the movie. I mean, you, you, you babies have bared with me, man. You babies have bared with me and you kept it, you kept it, you helped me keep it real, man. Because I, I had to do episodes early. I did like two in a row once and then three and then I would record one on Monday and then one on Wednesday. And then I finally fucking figured out uh, that I, you know, I could, I could get away with not doing one until today. Which is late, and thank you for thank you, my babies. But you know, I know you guys are waiting for it. But it was tough, man, getting through the shit, getting through this movie, and still doing this podcast. But I still brought it to you guys because you guys are great, and you support me, and also naturally bags, naturally income, naturally bags. Um. Um. 
Could you? You know what I was thinking about? Could you have said? Could you? If if some if there was a killer, if you knew, I think a guy. I think guys could have sex with a girl who killed somebody way easier than a girl who had like a girl. Girls are always talking about like this shit where they're like, "Oh, it's so hot." Serial killers are so hot. Like you're fucking full of shit, dude. You are full of shit. That's some shit that girls are just like, oh my god, so hot. But then, like, when they knew a guy would like be a little bit creepy, they'd be like, ew. Like, nah, dude, put your money where your mouth is, and 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 fucking let the fucking serial killers berber in your mouth. You know what I mean? Don't. This is real life, dude. Don't get out there and start talking all crazy shit like you want to fix up an old car unless you're ready to go buy the fucking frame. You understand? These chicks will be like, serial killers are so hot. And then some dude will like pop up around her, uh, like uh, over her shoulder. And they're like, whoa, you scared me. That's not cool. And you're like, what? You said you like serial killers. All I did was fucking pop up. Fuck that, dude. I would fuck a serial killer woman in a heartbeat. If she was that girl, Jodi Arias or whatever the fuck. Isn't that that hot one? Are you kidding me? Jodi Arias killed her husband? I mean, I, you know, I understand it's like bullshit because she, it's, it's horrible. But you got to get it in a little bit. Doesn't mean you should stop yourself from having some fun. She'll still get locked up, dude. Jodi Ari- Arias was slamming, dude. But she killed. So, people are like, yeah, she was kind of hot, huh? Does it make it hotter that she's a killer? No, I'm not into that shit. I don't get that shit. I don't let stuff cloud my judgment. Hot is hot. I don't give a shit if she like works on old cars. You know, some guys like, ah, oh, it's cool. She's got a fucking business, and you know, it turns me on because she's like a business. She's got business. Nah, you're being sexist in the reverse way, bro. I got a buddy like that. That's like, ah, it's cool. She got a real job. You know, a lot of these girls in L.A. You know, they don't have a shut up, dude. Get in where you fit in, dude. Jody Arias, yeah, hell yeah, man. I would date her. I would just always be on the lookout. You know? I would date Jody Arias. I'd also turn her in because it's not cool to kill someone, but I would be like, baby, I got to turn you in. And she'd be like, what the fuck? Why? We're slamming. We're, we're fucking, you know, we do the horizontal mambo. I'd be like, baby, it killed someone. And I know it. And she'd be like, but... Don't you like the way you I fucking make you berber? And I'd be like, sweetheart, you killed someone. Sure, I like berber, and but it's over. Thanks for the berbers. And that was when Chris ended his relationship with Jody Arias. She killed her ex. What is this shit? Postmates? Yes, all mine. Yes, all mine. A lot of, I got some fucking, um, what do you call it? Uh, Wells Fargo's hit me up. Did you buy this? Did you do that? Did you do that? Fraudulent shit. I did it all, though. Thanks for checking, babies. It's kind of annoying. What, you don't think it's annoying when they do that shit? It's like, did you really buy this coffee somewhere? <laughs> Bro, stop being so creepy, Wells Fargo. Hey, did you really buy that? Did you really buy a bench for your house? Yeah. What fucking criminal is going to buy a bench, you know? Ah, we got Chris's credit card numbers. Let's buy a fucking $900 bench. Huh? Hey, dude, let me tell you something. If you're a criminal and you buy a five, uh, uh, $900 bench, have it, you know? One time I started dating this chick when I was in my high school and the, and her ex-boyfriend hated it and he fucking, and he couldn't, he, I don't know, he just couldn't fucking do it. He was like, he couldn't deal with it. And he, and he, and he broke into my car when I was in, when it was in the driveway, when I went to sleep and they just took a gas card and like went and bought stuff in the gas station. So my life's hard. La Cunada, you know? So fucking funny. And whatever, I stole this. I stole this girl, you know. I guess I didn't. I didn't, I didn't actually steal it, but she dumped him and then liked me because fucking, you know. 
I was like, well, baby, well, you want to hang out? And she was like, sure. I meant that one. I meant that one. I was like, baby, want to hang out? She was like, sure. Berber. Baby, want to hang out? Sure. <laughs> your buddy, st- your ex stole my gas card. I guess that means... I- Fuck it, I don't know. Just have it early. Who gives a shit? Um, I guess I'm going to wrap this up, dude. It was hard to come back, dude. It really was hard to come back because I haven't done a podcast in one month. And it's all good, my babies. But I appreciate you guys sticking it with me and all that shit. Um, Download the Cash app for free on the App Store or Google Play Market. And uh, I've got some shows coming up. Um, I told you guys about them already, but San Diego and... Foxwoods, Connecticut, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, Rochester, New York, Santa Barbara, uh, New Buffalo, Michigan, and Detroit. Uh, you can download my app there. Uh, support the show by buying merch at store.crystalia.com. Uh, you get this one, Futures Too Bright shirt. Um, let me turn around so you can see it. It's fucking cool, actually. Right there. So that rips. Um, And uh, that's it. Uh, Subscribe to the YouTube channel, please. It helps. And then uh, you could uh, tweet me by using the handle congrats pod or whatever, but I don't, I'm not, I don't give a shit if you do that. And Wamfire writes it on here. He thinks it's a good idea, but I don't give a shit. And then um, that's it. Uh, You's coming out soon. My, my, the show I'm on. And, uh, and that's it. Uh, You guys are great. Okay, guys. Thanks for listening. (laughs) 